We're in Buffalo, New York, and um, what to f what's the name of your film? Slime City Massacre, which takes place in New York City in sort of a post-apocalyptic future, which makes Buffalo the perfect stand-in. The Rust Belt is wonderful for sort of a road warrior environment. I directed uh, the first Slime City all over uh, New York City and Alphabet City, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and the reason I've decided to do the film is that there's a lot of interest in 1980s horror films now, and I thought if ever there was a time that a little micro-budget cult film uh, warranted a sequel, this would be the best time for it. Today we're going to massacre Lloyd Kaufman. What uh, What's going to happen? Can you talk a bit about what's going to happen? Today is our big production value day. We're going to shoot Lloyd against a green screen and composite him into a New York City street scene, set, detonate a nuclear explosion and watch him vaporize. What, what's up? To make your own damn green screen. Our ground is made out, it's a simple paint that we bought in a store. And you see it blends perfectly with the fabric green screen which we purchased. But you can make your own walls as well as floor. You just need a paintbrush, 30 bucks, and a gallon of paint. The most important bits is to have even lighting to get your talent uh, forward away from the green screen. This way you don't have to deal with as much spill, which is reflected green light. Okay, picture's up, stand by, action, Just turn some pages for about 10 seconds. Now you can uh, close the paper and look at your watch. Walk forward to the edge of the green screen. And boom! Turn. Uh, when we shoot the background plate, we will be able to match the same angle and so on so that Lloyd here will seamless, seamlessly blend into the, uh, into the background in the shots. The perspective's the same. And um, it also allows me to feed this information into a separate program called a 3D tracker, which will then allow me to, when I do the building replacement and debris and things like that, will allow that to all fit into the scene with the correct perspective as well. So my skin and bones will be uh, gone. Is that peel you, you like an onion? Very, very nice. <laughs> Good luck, 20 seconds. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Then I'll cue you to walk forward. And uh, you know you just slice over this way, and when you get to the end, I'm going to say explosion. You know, a little bit of a reaction and a spin around, and then we'll get this in a close-up. You can talk me through it, right? This Absolutely. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a little wipey wipe. Oh, okay. Scream and Got it. Stand by. Action. Whoa! whoa. Jumping Jesus out a pogo stick. Oh, fuck! Cut! Awesome. That was good. I'll do another one. That was great. This is uh, basically all the all the camera stuff so that uh, when I end up putting the shot together um, I have all the camera information to make a fake version of the camera so this way any elements that are in 3D can be uh, composited in and all have the correct angles such as the buildings, debris, um, the the blast itself. So what is some information that you were writing down? Like what? Um, the shutter angle, rotation, the height from the ground, pan, tilt, information like that. So then this way when we when we go to actually shoot the background plate, everything will end up matching. So this way everything has the correct perspective and uh, I don't end up having to do extra fiddling so that I can spend more time blending it in and getting it to look realistic than, you know, 
uh, problem solving. And then this way I can get to the next shot, and the next shot, and the next shot. They're cleaning the green screen. Wow. You don't want dirt on a green oh, screen. Yeah. So you'll use it again. We'll use it again, or Chris will paint it back to use them for whatever their original purpose, purposes were. What we shot today went very well. In addition to your close-up, we shot all of the crew had their cameos today, walking back and forth in front of the camera and passing before the lens like this, so it looks like there's many people in New York City. And, you know, the funny thing about shooting something like this, which I've never done before, is it'll be mo a month or months before we have any idea how the shot will actually look once Eric starts bringing all the other elements together. We need to shoot background plates of downtown Buffalo, just because it's convenient for us, and we're going to comp in existing buildings from New York City to make it look like sort of a fantasy merger of New York City and Buffalo, and that's what we blow up and wind up with the uh, abandoned postal facility here where we're shooting the movie. Did we learn anything today? Green screen's fast. Um, so now, gentlemen, I, I'm looking around the room here. I don't. What? This is supposed to be a courtroom. I don't. What? What's going on here? Come on. This is the modern day green screen technology. So now, green screen, which everybody knows. Everybody who's watching this knows what green screen is. You say you replace the background and you put in whatever the hell you want. So if I wanted to put you on a courtroom in Mars, mm -hmm. we could do that. Why not just get a courtroom, Dave? It adds the comedy. There's this, a certain inherent absurdity to uh, uh, a background that's obviously transposed and it gives you a lot more freedom and I think it makes the jokes even more over the top. And what what will you do for distribution? Will you distribute yourself? Uh, My idea is to talk to a little company at one point named Trauma. No, big mistake. From, it, it's from a matter of like somebody can go to create space on Amazon. And you can self-distribute it. We got some, uh, you know, like in the Caesar Auto franchise, we have Felissa Rose, Darren Miller, Briggs Stevens, Joe Estevez, now Lloyd Coffin, and we uh, we're just going to try to get some publicity or interest on the basis of maybe some people, people, are, some names people are familiar with in the genre, in addition to good reviews from uh, Dread Central and PrettyScary.net, uh, a couple of film festival wins, and try to. At worst case scenario, I don't want to self-distribute this. But if it's a better or more viable option than uh, going to a company that might not do the film any justice, then th th there's not much point to it. Okay, so now what's that man? Who is that man over there? Is that the entire crew, that one guy? Today, this is the entire crew. This is Stephen Bode, DP. He's in the producing department. Uh, this is his equipment. This is, he was the director of photography and co-producer on Cesar Renato in the House of Dragons. Try to light it as flat and evenly as possible. Make sure there's no spillback onto the talent that's in front of it. Uh, basically, what will happen is if there's um, reflection of the green, it highlights the edges around the person. Um, it'll be harder to key that out. So you're going to be playing a six-year-old child. I don't understand. I'm going to be playing your six-year-old grandson in a flashback scene. And uh, the idea is, um, well, I don't want to get a kid actor. And make the limitations work for you. So We're shooting a comedy. Well, will you be on your knees? I mean, how do you make yourself so small? Yeah, yeah just like you with the Lord of the Rings that we're making Elijah Wood smaller, you know, that kind of thing, where you take an actor of a certain height and you shrink him down and you pitch up, you know, Mike is gonna, gonna pitch up my voice and it'll be nowhere near convincing, but it'll be- But it'll be fun, funny. that's great. Oh, it's so interesting. I know about Santa Claus, boy. He brings presents to all good boys and girls. Give it about four, a couple seconds of pre-roll. Action. You know about Santa Claus, boy? He brings 
presents, all those good, uh, good boys and girls. You're right. He brings presents to those that's been good, but to those that have been bad, he doesn't. He brings presents to those that's been good, but to those that have been bad, you know what he does? He cuts off their penis with a chainsaw. Yeah! <laughs> you better run, boy! You better run for your life! <laughs> And uh, when he's in his witness box, and when he's at his table... Uh, so now it gets even more complicated because Dave, David has to... Uh, David's got to now replicate the eye lines for bubbles vis-a-vis -vis the judge and vis-a-vis... Uh, drain them and uh, the other characters. So it's like a major uh, jigsaw puzzle, and uh, there's not a lot of margin for uh, for error, other than cutaways. I guess if you have a lot of cutaways, then you can, if somebody's not looking in the right direction, you may be able to fix it by uh, cutting to a close-up of the Twitter or a gavel or something like that. So, so we have to have new eye lines. So where where. So now this is what over here? This now represents the uh, Dracula's lawyer. Okay. This now represents uh, Bubbles, the defense attorney. Bubbles, okay. And right here, it's like anytime it's at the witness box, it's going to be your eyes, which would just be the right there. We Maybe put a little tape there if you don't mind. To storyboard any of this stuff, or can you keep it in your head? Or I mean, if you get hit by a bus, it seems like you're the only one who's can do this, or can That's somebody else edit it, or is it pretty much? You? I think uh, this pretty good film would uh, disappear if I if I got hit by a bus because it's it's very much in uh, in my head, and it's not. Yeah, it seems out. like I mean all of the where the positionings and the eye the eye level everything. It, 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 I'm it's in your this, head, not written down. I'm using the standard Judge Judy Court as a basis of, uh, of how we stage things. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, Miss Cochran, I, I mean Miss Cochran. Yo, what's up? Uh, there is no jury in this civil trial, and young lady, you will refer to me as your honor? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Hey, Miss Cochran. Yo, what's up? There is no jury in this civil trial, and, and you're to refer to me as your honor or uh, maybe your hotness. Spot on. Your hotness. Play. In this trial, I will prove that Caesar and Otto DiNovio are completely innocent of any wrongdoing in the death of Steve Dracula. Furthermore, I will prove that Mr. Dracula lured the defendants to his house under the false pretenses of turning these two charming, innocent brothers into part of his legion of undead minions. If you, if you like green screen with a good DP, your day can go pretty fast. Most of your work will be done in post-production now. You know, most of the hours will go into post-production. And uh, there's pros and cons. The pros are you work with at a better speed. The cons are that you um, can't. You don't always know what your background is going to be, and you're always guessing. You know, I won't know for sure exactly what the how everything's going to cut together until I'm physically in the edit suite, you know, uh, splicing everything. Today I learned that Lloyd Kaufman is not anywhere as horrible as the rumors seem to make him out to be. He's actually uh, pretty easy to work with. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm fucking right. I dropped my pen. Let me just bend over and pick it up. Approach the bench, please. Now, Miss Cochran, this court is not going to tolerate your uh, oh-so-inappropriate innuendos. If you want to parade your goods around, you better do it in one of them trauma movies. For now, I insist on utmost decorum. Now, behave yourself. Go sit down. <laughs>